Now there's a special kind of frustration that comes from dealing with technology. Maybe you can relate. This was one of those times where I just about threw the iPad across the room. This digital art journey has been quite interesting. I'm not giving up on it. I'm, I'm still very much hooked on the idea that digital art can help me at the easel as an oil painter. So I'm really looking forward to bringing you this installment from the studio. Now, I'm taking inspiration from a trip that I took to Italy about five years ago, and I'm just getting into that reference file now. And here I've got a doorway in Venice with a beautiful textured stucco wall with some of that exposed brick. And also I've got this gondola tied up to a pole. I thought that was pretty cool as well. So I'm gonna take the iPad for a spin in this little demo and I'm gonna be drawing in Procreate. And again, I'm no expert at all. I'm approaching this as an oil painter, as a traditional artist working in the digital medium. I find this to be quite a fun exercise of quickly getting a composition down. But as I said, it's, it's not always easy. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit frustrated. Anyway, let's get into it. This is Sketch Zone. Hi there and welcome to Sketch Zone and welcome back to the studio. My name's Andrew, it is such a pleasure to have your company. Now, if you're new here, this series is dedicated to digital art. I'm an oil painter, I'm a landscape portrait guy, I love traditional stuff, but I've become hooked with digital art and seeing where that can take my traditional art practice. So I wanted to share this journey with you here in this special series called Sketch Zone. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Now this episode of Sketch Zone is gonna be split into two parts. In the first part, I'm gonna be drawing this doorway in Venice, and in the second part, I'm gonna be drawing a gondola. And that's where disaster struck. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. I'm working on a 3000 pixel square, and I'm pretty new to Procreate. I approach this in very much the same way I would a Photoshop drawing. Working on layers, starting with that base layer. But I'm not decided on these brushes yet. So I'm thinking, okay, well look, I'll just sketch this up first, observing those walls of perspective to the best of my ability. And just sketch this up as if it were a drawing and then lay in some color. I don't want this to be exactly like the reference material. I want a bit more of a tunnel before we arrive at the destination to create more of a focal point. And this will open up the composition with some more space than what I'm seeing in that reference material. I'm following a very basic linear perspective here with a horizon line that I've just kind of guessed where I wanted it within the composition everything in the tunnel will vanish away to that point. And then once I feel this is roughly in the right place, I start sketching in and solidifying the forms. I don't like to work over a stark white background. I prefer to have a bit of color here. So I'm gonna approach this in the same way that I would my painting. Start with something that closely resembles burnt sienna. Now to draw these stucco walls, I'm starting with a very tonal approach and it helps achieving this texture, having a brush that's called stucco. Nice little shortcut there. This is one of those advantages to using the digital medium is you really get a sense of what the final painting could look like by using some of these tools. And I really do enjoy the textured brushes. I also toggle that opacity constantly as well as the size of the brush. You'll see that menu over there on the left hand side. My thinking here is just sketch everything up in a very linear fashion, then knock in those darker tones. Then once I'm happy with the drawing and the tonal dynamic overall, then add in some color, thinking that I'll go over the top and work in some layers, but I could also insert a layer below this drawing and have color come from underneath. So I thought I might be working with both, pushing and pulling the image. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to get some of this yellow color onto that stucco wall in the background. And my approach to color here on the iPad is pretty straightforward. I'm basically just winging it. I haven't selected a palette for this painting. I've seen some digital artists lay out their colors meticulously before they go for this. I'm still really finding my feet here. I quite enjoy the color cube. Once I feel I've achieved something kind of close, I then just select that color by hovering my finger over the screen. It pulls up that little color selector tool. I've used that a bunch here and it just helps me reinsert the color that I achieved somewhere else on the canvas. This also does help provide some continuity over the entire scene. One of the things that really attracted me to this image in the first place was that green water. I love the color dynamic that used to complement your opposites, that bluey green and the orangey red. Those two colors are sitting pretty opposite one another on that color wheel. And anytime we have complementary opposites within a landscape or even a portrait painting for that matter, it just creates so much vibrant visual interest. I might play a bit more with the color of that water and make it a bit more intense, increase the saturation of that bluey green. In hindsight, I probably should have left the drawing here because it looks kind of cool. I like that sketchy quality and just loosely laid in color. It's not overworked at all. And I think where this drawing ended up going was probably a bit too far. It's an interesting exercise, pushing the image, seeing how far I could take it. It's definitely a skill I want to develop, but here, this had a really nice quality to it before I started laying in each individual brick. I'm working right here on the brick wall, and then I'm going to move up to those bricks at the window. It can be tough trying to follow along with that cursor. The only thing I have going for me is I'm looking directly at that iPad so I can see where the pencil is, but if I was doing this on the tablet, it'd be pretty hard to follow. At any point during this demo, if we lose the cursor, I'll make sure I go ahead and point at it. Where did it go? Ah, oh, there it is. So here to create the texture, I'm working simultaneously with some darker shadows on the underside of this stucco that's peeling off the wall. And then I'll lay in some highlights. I don't know what it is about these old walls, but I just find them so interesting and I might even have to paint a few more. Certainly, it'd be great to spend some time at the easel and do this with oils. I'm working over here on the stucco wall and I don't want to lose that underlying chatter of the cross hatching from the initial construction lines, but I do want to clean it up a bit and provide some more texture in this wall. You'll notice here that the drawing is not exactly the same as the reference material. And I'd love to say that that was definitely on purpose, but I just got lost in the drawing process and found that my initial construction lines had veered pretty far. And then I thought, well, I'm just gonna ad lib at this point. So there's a section of stucco here that I had peeling off the wall, revealing a bit more of that underlying brickwork. You'll notice that does not appear in the photograph. And I guess it's fun sometimes to veer off script and really try to own the reference material. Try and work out what's really cool about that image and then maybe add a bit more of it. I like where this drawing's going. I decided to manipulate that background a touch because I got lost with the perspective and the doorways are off kilter ever so slightly. So I decided to just twist them so they fit with that perspective a bit more and now they're laying within the space much nicer. So I'll go ahead and add some darker tone to this tunnel in the entrance. By deepening the tone here, it'll provide enough contrast with that light that's coming through the opposing wall. And hopefully that invites the viewer into this scene. I really like playing with the colors here, almost like glazing an oil paint. 
by adjusting the opacity of the marks that I'm making, you can layer one color on top of another and get that cumulative effect of building up the surface. This provides a lot of interest and a lot of texture in the final result. As I'm studying my reference material, more and more details are becoming apparent to me. I like this sign here on the doorway. I start marking in each individual letter and then I decide I'm probably pushing this a bit too far. Chill out, Andrew. Here's where adjusting the transparency of the marks I'm making really helps. It's so good for painting water digitally because you can still make out a bit of that underlying color of the water itself coming through and not totally obscure and obliterate any details that are underneath that surface. I'm pretty much just drawing a mirror reflection of whatever I see above, but there is a little trick that can really help with reflection, and that's just selecting the area, flipping it, copying and pasting it, reversing it, dragging it down, and then adjusting the transparency. Here I'm just using a eraser tool to just mask out the top line, blend it in a bit more, but there you've got a reflection and it looks pretty convincing. So from a time-saving point of view, this is a really handy tool. I just love the texture and some of the rocks that I'm seeing in the reference material. So I want to chibble up the edges of some of these bigger stones in the immediate foreground. I start marking around the edges with a bit of deeper tone. And then here and there, there will be some little highlights that are showing a bit of ambient skylight coming through that opening where the little canal is. And the relationship of warm to cool also provides a lot of visual interest. And I apply these marks in here by just tapping the screen with a larger brush, again using that stucco brush that's just part of the Procreate selection. In some areas, I practice adding that texture by just scribbling up the wall. pretty happy with the overall look of the drawing, so I'm going to start to firm up some of these elements by adding more shadows and highlights to the background to bring out more of that texture. And then focusing on individual panels of wood in these old doorways. Again, working those shadows and then an equal opposing highlight, shining from above in a really diffused manner. As I said in a recent Sketch Endeavor episode, this is an elaborate form of note taking for me. I'm getting to know the subject much better. I'm also able to produce a color study of sorts, something that I'm going to be able to take to the easel and refer to when it comes time to paint the final version. I'm an oil painter at the end of the day, and I do enjoy the digital medium, but for me personally, it's just a means to an end. Maybe one day I'll be producing fully fledged digital art that won't be intended for the easel. But for now, I'm always thinking in terms of oil paint and how I'm gonna recreate something while I'm sitting there at the easel. One really convenient thing about this medium is that you don't have to wait for drying time. So when it comes time to apply something like a glaze, you can do it immediately, of course. And what I love is adding that distance and depth to the scene. Like here, I'm gonna be adding a violet glaze to push that wall a bit further back and create even more visual space.
It's pretty interesting working in Procreate, building the image up with layers. And I have the tendency to want to work continually on that image, just teasing out more and more detail. But with this next drawing, I wanted to take a bit more of a painterly approach because I don't have all that much time. I want to get back to the easel and get back to painting. And I don't want to be spending all the time there designing a composition. It's really addictive to just pour over the drawing, but here I wanted to be a bit more conscious and a bit looser, a bit more painterly. So for this, I'm gonna be taking the Groot brushes for a spin using some of those oil paint brushes, acrylic brushes, and also some of the pencils that Nikolai Groot has put together. Now, if you wanna link to any of the brushes that I'm using in this demo, then make sure you find those by clicking the links in the description down below. Let's get sketching. Before I begin my drawing, I'm just going to test out some of these pencils and paintbrushes. I'm thinking of approaching the subject in the same way as the last drawing, just sketching it up first, and then once I'm happy with that, going ahead and laying in some color. Now I'm pretty happy with the reference image overall, but it is missing one thing, and that's light. So I'm going to play with that in this drawing. Now, one thing I love about Groot brushes is the names of the brushes. I've sketched this up with some maybe so's, and now let's paint in that sky with uh, a moth wing. Why not? I'm gonna lay on some color for the background sky first, and then work my way into those distant buildings and bring the scene forward, just one tier of depth at a time. I constantly am referring to that initial construction drawing and just laying in the color underneath those pencil marks. Because I've isolated this as a separate layer, I can just take that drawing away to reveal some of the brushwork. And here I'm trying to be intentionally more painterly, despite the fact it's a digital drawing. I'm not going to focus on any detail here in the distant buildings because I want that attention of focus to be on the gondola in the foreground and that really cool lamp with a pointy hat on it. What, what do you call those things? I'm trying my best to resist that temptation to sketch in every single window or every single column on this building. I'm just going for a loose impression of these buildings. And so far, I'm happy with that quality. I do have the tendency to overwork things and continually draw back in over and over and over again, teasing out more and more detail. Now, if the sun is gonna be shining in this scene, I'm gonna take some inspiration from the previous drawing and increase the intensity of the color of this water, have more of that green coming through, and then drop down a nice reflection of both the sky and some of those buildings, just dragging this through in a really nice chattered way, following along some of those ripples in the water. As I bring these ripples closer towards the viewer, the pattern opens up and the ripples become deeper and deeper. But also we get to see a little bit of that underlying color in the water, so the intensity of that green gets more saturated. Like the series of Photoshop brushes, these Groot Procreate brushes act a lot like oil paint in a way. The bristles create these furrows and troughs and it blends into surrounding marks really nicely. I'm making a series of messy brush marks here in the immediate foreground and going off script a little bit with this reflection of the gondola, having even more intensity of that green coming through. So where we have a reflection of either the gondola or this wooden staircase leading into the water, it's going to show that really nice deep bottled green. I'm really looking forward to putting in a few extra details as well, like some seagulls that are landing on top of these poles and the gondola itself. It's going to be a bit of a challenge though getting the sun to shine 
on the gondola, seeing as it's not in my reference material. So I'm going to be winging it here and hopefully it turns out okay. Again, if I'm able to go there digitally, then this should translate to the easel. I've said before that it's really helpful to paint with hindsight. We all have 2020 vision in hindsight. So if we can go there first and work something out ahead of time, it makes it so much easier when it comes time to do the final because we've already been there. So if it works here as a digital image, I'm sure it's going to work as a painting. As I look at more and more digital art online, I'm so blown away by the talent of artists around the world who know this medium inside out. They, they almost own it. It's incredible. And some of these images that other artists are producing, they look like paintings. They actually look like they were created with oils or acrylic or watercolor. It's pretty amazing. So that's one thing I really want to focus on with my digital art journey, is creating something that looks like it was made by hand. There's something about that aesthetic that I find really attractive. I find this old lantern or lamp post just so incredible. There's so much going on. As I was studying that reference material, I could see that there was little bits of glass inside the light housing on this thing. I thought, wow, that would be so much fun to paint. To get the sun to shine in this scene on some of these foreground elements like the gondola, I'm going to deepen the tone of some of these shaded portions and make it really black and then have a bit more reflected light from the sky above. And then I'm thinking what could really help is some concentrated highlights, but always a more stark contrast between my lighter lights and my darker darks will increase the intensity of that light. Also, a little bit of a burnout or a halation where the sun is shining, that could also help to get the sun to really sparkle off this lacquered surface. I like that there's a drapery element here as well. This difference in textures is really interesting. I might play with this a bit more in the final painting and create some more intricate fabric with a bit more of a pattern to it. I just love the quality of the water in this reference material, and I really want to communicate that reflection clearly. It's all about a diffused soft edge with some of the bigger ripples, and then bringing in a really concentrated linear reflection of some of the elements like the poles and the gondola. I'm thinking I need a bit more distance and depth within the scene, so I isolate a layer and start drawing in a glaze to create a more violet haze in the background. I was really excited to continue working on this, so I went to export the image. Um, I accidentally duplicated it and then deleted it. And it's gone. Don't you just love technology? What? No! Oh, come on! Well, that was frustrating, but it is what it is. At least I had the screenshot of where I was up to with the video recording. I could go back and work into that, but it's all compressed down to one layer now, and I don't have the resolution in that image. So I'm, I might leave it there, take what I learned, and apply that to the next drawing. But as a compositional study, this will work really well to take to the easel and start producing this in oil paint.
I've had a few people ask about what my opinion was on where they should get started with digital. And I just wanna say, again, I am no expert when it comes to the digital medium, but I'd have to say if you're just starting out, Procreate is a pretty good way of going. Working just on the iPad, it's a little bit more intuitive than working on a Wacom tablet where you're looking at the screen and not looking at your hand. Here, you can actually see the marks that you're making just working directly on that iPad. It's pretty accessible and the program is really user-friendly. Now, if you got Procreate and you wanna give Groot brushes a try, then make sure you find those by clicking the links in the description down below. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with me here in the studio. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, then make sure you click that like button for me and leave me a comment down below. And if you're not already subscribed to this channel, then make sure you do so and click that notification bell so you're notified when I upload another video. I'm gonna get out of here and get back to the drawing board and I look forward to seeing you in the studio again very soon.